How's it going guys? Chris back here again with some more Historic Brawl. Today we are checking out one of the very few commanders from the new set that is not a human artificer. Because uh, we have a lot of those now. Uh, but we, we have a couple of them and we're checking out an actual bad guy today. Like we, our last two were technically the good guys, right? Because they were uh, Thanos and Urza. We're both good-ish. This metallic mimic will name Goblin. We're on a Goblin deck, but there is a mono-black combo that involves Goblins, and metallic mimic is part of that. Uh, Jadar is just the best turn one play, turn two play we got, right? Because this, like if they don't do anything, we, we gix for two next turn and that's that's pretty good uh -huh. should I take my meatball uh well that's the second part of the combo do we do get some guaranteed damage here We have all the two mana removal spells. So it's weird because Gix is kind of a commander that would have, like before Brothers War, was filling an exclusively blue archetype. Yeah, it's Poison the Cup. Yeah, that's fine. We're up to five mana anyways. They have their second white source so they can get Lisa down. land is what we're hoping for. If they hit a blocker, we're kind of stopped at the moment. We'll have to spend a turn rebuilding. Yeah, where they hit a blocker. So we can go Metallic Mimic on Goblin. And then into... Goblin? We won't attack. Next turn we can, though. shield counter. I was trying to remember what it was called. It is a shield counter. Yeah, that makes the most EV sense. So we drew a warm coil. Man, I should have that in my deck. Why didn't I put that in my deck? So the reason we're playing the uh, the Putrid Goblin combo is because it technically got a redundant piece in um, Brothers War. In the Retro Artifacts, it got technically two redundant pieces, although one of the redundant pieces isn't 
like an infinite win condition. So these gain commander plus int plus putrid goblin plus metallic mimic is infinite. Man, they went full risk. I hope it pays off for them. Because we have a Cali toss, which invalidates their commander. And we're just going to kill it anyways. And uh, I think we go full face. To just try to draw into the Putrid Goblin. I didn't put... Uh, Yeah, I didn't put um, I didn't put mini tutors on here because I kind of just want to see how decent the card advantage off Yoggmoth is. Like I feel. Hmm. I think we just go for it again. Like depending on how they block, we can make our bed afterwards, right? Action. Take action. Take action. Take action. Uh, I've already played my land for turn. Well, that's a bit scuffed, really. Uh, so I have eight mana to play with. I could go Shieldred. Shieldred's a guaranteed kill, isn't she? I don't know why I thought about that for as long as I did. Uh, because they draw a card and then and then they lose. Yep. Whew. Yeah, no, she um Gix is really, really powerful, I think. But he is um He is one of those commanders where when you build the deck, like you're building it for Gix. So if you can't get, like if you play your Gix and he gets removed, and you play your Gix and he gets removed, and you play your Gix and he gets removed, like it's not going to be good times, right? This is more what I want. So I really want a two drop in hand, right? Cause this deck really, really values two drops. Because if you play a two drop, with some kind of evasion, you're almost guaranteed a free card off Gix when you play him on turn three, and then it doesn't feel as bad when he gets removed when your opponent goes to their turn three. Remove it. Now, right, like, 
Assassin's Trophy was one of the possible outs in their deck to uh, to answer this shenanigans. So I think this nets us neutral right now. Yeah, it does. So this way we have four procs for uh, Dogmoth when he comes down. Three procs now, but... Yeah, now we're actually accelerating. So that's Alter Dementia. That's the new uh, kill condition with the Putrid Goblin combo, right? Because the Putrid Goblin combo essentially gets you infinite Putrid Goblins in the battlefield. Well, it does, that's not a good way to explain it. So it has persist, so it comes back when it dies with a negative one, negative one counter. Metallic Mimic gives us a plus one, plus one counter. The two counters, because of how magic rules work, cancel each other out. So when you sacrifice the Putrid Oblin for the second time, it doesn't just die like it should normally. It actually comes back with a negative one, negative one counter. Uh, which is really good. I need to remember to... Uh... So these two have Menace, so they can't be blocked by one creature. Yogmoth can still get blocked. We have a lot of mana, but not anything to do with it. Yogmoth also kind of solves the issue there too, because if you discard X cards, you can exile the top cards of your opponent's library, and then just play lands and spells from there without paying their mana cost, right? It's very expensive, but Cabal Stronghold gets the job done. And if you have five lands in hand, why wouldn't you, right? And one of the good things about him is that you don't even really have to attack with him, right? His ability is static on the battlefield. So the fact that they make two bears here doesn't really threaten Yogmoth, right? Because the things that will be attacking, you don't have to do it with Yogmoth. It's the whole Winota problem, right? One of the issues with uh, answering your Winota is that when they have the powerful combat ability and they don't actually have to attack, it's really hard to actually answer the problem. Uh, what do I want? Anything here? No, I don't want to. Uh, let's come off Stronghold. Let's uh, discard six. That one. Yeah, give them all away. This is a combo too, but it's not one that we're going to be able to get to, I don't think. So what do I got? Uh, some good stuff. And <laughs> yeah, his ability is crazy. It's a, it'll win the game, right? And his card draw keeps you in cards, so you're never going to be in a situation where you don't have uh, the resources to activate it, which is kind of sneaky, actually. Despite...
not having evasion himself. The fact that he just comes with two bodies and that he reliably lets you have two bodies is really good. Uh, Phyrexian Reclamation is mainly flavor text, but I mean, it's also its, it's ability is powerful. I put Rotting Registrar in the deck because I kind of this and the uh, the other deck that is gonna go up the day after this. Kind of have a, like a flavor text issue to them. Uh, well, like a design issue, and that design issue is that this deck tends to favor low to the ground creatures, right? Because you want to get in the attacks to draw the cards. But as a result, you don't really have a lot of, like, power to play with in the late game. So I, I put in some... Some questionable looking creatures because... That one and that one. Because I was a little bit worried that it wouldn't have, like, I, that I would get to the late game, that I wouldn't be able to finish things off. But I, uh, after playing a few games with the deck, I don't think that's really an issue. I think it wins by the mid game, and, like, that's that. So I still get to draw cards. Right? I don't. Lose all abilities. Okay, opponent. I see what you're putting down. During their instep, I will infernal grasp my own Gix. Yeah, like, I think I'm favored. So it's slightly, it's the same price to do it that way. 